Hello and welcome to this top-down engine tutorial. I'm Renault from Mount Mountains and today we're going to talk about scenes, levels, how to go from one scene to the other, how to link scenes together and that kind of stuff. So chances are that your game is going to be made of multiple levels, sections, rooms. So in the top-down engine, just like in Unity in general, there are multiple ways you can structure your levels. Uh, the most straightforward way, of course, is to do it by creating one scene per level and have a door, gate or whatever uh, at the end of your level that leads to the next level. But you could also create multiple sections within a single scene. Uh, of course, there's a trade-off. Uh, if you make a huge scene with tiny sections, well, you, you, uh, in terms of performance, it's not going to be optimal. But if you separate each room into a separate scene, well, you'll have a loading uh, or some time to load uh, each scene. So that's something to consider. And while well, the engine supports all that, you can create multiple sections within one scene and you can also link your levels, save data over them, create level selection screens and so on. So we're going to see all that today. So right now I am in the minimal uh, 2D rooms 2 demo scene and um, it's this one and, and rooms 1, of course, um, are good ways to showcase how to go from uh, one part of a level to another, like I just did, or how to go from one scene to another. And you can see that every time I go through that gate, I get this loading screen. And um, that's because usually when you, when you want to go to another scene in Unity, you would use the Scene Manager API, which is native in Unity, uh, and probably the Scene Manager dot load scene method. Um, I think that this native method doesn't provide visual feedback to the player and scene loading on mobile for example where it can take a bit longer uh, it is better to have some sort of progress bar and so on than just a black screen so um, that's that's why uh, the engine comes with its own loading scene manager um, and it can be called from anywhere it's pretty much as easy as using uh, the regular API uh, if we open this class, for example, that is on the blue door, uh, you'll see it does a bunch of stuff such as handling input and so on. But in this case, uh, if we open the class, you see that it calls um, the go to next level method. And basically what it does is either uh, call the level manager or simply call loading scene manager load scene. And this line, this simple line right here, is all you need, all you need to load a new scene. So uh, you you call this line, you give it your level, uh, your scene name as a string, and the engine will take care of the rest. So that's that's really good when you want to go from one scene to another. Um, but let's say you want to move inside your scene. So uh, same thing, you want to use the, when you want to go from one scene to the other, the, the level entry point is, is really good and we'll come back to that. But if you want to go to uh, just another part of your scene, like, uh, like so, in, in this case, we're going to uh, the green door, the green door is there and we want to go to the blue door, we can use the teleporter uh, component. It uses the, it's an extension of the button activated zone. So uh, it comes by default with a lot of options to um, decide whether or not you want uh, to require special, a special ability, whether or not you want to only allow player characters, whether it should be auto activated or if the user has to press input uh, to activate it, uh, you can have a prompt show up. But the part that is really specific to the teleporter is at the bottom here. So you need to specify another teleporter, already a transform. Um, no, actually, it has to be a teleporter. So um, in this case, you would just drag and drop your green door like that. You can decide whether it affects only the player, but you could also have it go like a full portal mode where every bullet that goes there goes out the other way. Uh, and you have a bunch of options to decide whether or not you want to teleport the camera or have it lurp uh, to the new position and you can add a fade to black. So once all that is set up, 
you can get you can just go uh, through the gate so you see that as soon as i approach there's this nice a prompt that comes up and if i press space which is my activation button i go the other way and we could change the way it behaves by having uh, maybe a not to activation like that and now every time i'm gonna go so it, it still requires a press on this side but on the other one I didn't press anything, you know, and I just teleported. So like that, you can you can link. Um, you you could decide to have a huge level, cut into tiny rooms uh, that you would spread into, you know, your your scene, and you would move like that inside your dungeon, for example. And now let's say you want to split your levels across multiple scenes, but you want to be able to enter them at different points. So maybe, um, a, a, well, we are in a good example, uh, the minimal 2D room scene. You see that here we have two gates, uh, the blue gate and the green gate. And they also have what is called points of entry, which are basically checkpoints, but they could just be transforms. And on the other side, uh, when we click on the blue gate, we want to open minimal 2D rooms too which is somewhere over there. And if I go to room two, you see that I also have two doors on this side. So a blue one and a green one. They are in the same room. But of course, they could be uh, further apart or you could decide that you want to enter on the left of your level, on the right of your level, at the top and so on. So uh, you want point of entry and all that is defined into the level manager of each scene. Here you see that there is a fold out points of entry. And on this side, I have defined two points of entry, point one, this one, point two over there. Now, um, this is an array. So point of entry one will have the index zero, point of entry two will have the index one. If I go back to room one, and if I go to my doors, uh, here you can see that this is loading minimal 2D rooms too with using points of entry or oh, this checkbox is checked and I say I want to go to index 0 and on this I'm also loading minimal 2D rooms too but I say I want to go to index 1 so when I go to uh, through the blue gate from rooms 1 I'm gonna exit through the blue gate in rooms 2 and same thing if I go through the green gate in room one, I'm gonna exit uh, through the green gate in room two. So let's see how it goes. I travel inside room one. Now I have my two doors. If I go through the blue one, I exit through the blue gate. Well, I, I put my um, exit point like over there, but you get the idea. And if I go through the green one, I'm gonna go back to room one through the right green gate and that's a good way uh, to, to create you know huge levels and link them together while uh, giving the player a good idea of where uh, things are and where things go the last thing I wanted to show you today is uh, how to create a, a level selection screen so it's really the same principle but uh, more on the UI side so uh, to see that we're gonna go not in common but in demos level selection and open this scene. So as you can see, this scene is made of a, a collection of cards. Um, it's just pure standard, uh, regular Unity UI stuff. Uh, the only part that is special is in, um, I think it's on the button. It's on the button. So uh, here we have a button and we have the same you see in, in, in every, um, in every card and on it we have a level selector script that says okay uh, this is gonna load the koala dungeon demo scene and if I click on this one you will see that this one loads uh, I lost it it's right here uh, this one loads loft 3d and all that is possible because simply uh, I have on my background here, 
I have an MM Touch button class, so, uh, but really any button would do, uh, that on release will target, you know, the uh, level selected go to level method of the button alt. So uh, as simple as uh, dragging and dropping that, my bad, like that, and going into level selector, go to level, this will load uh, automatically the level specified right here. So a uh, really simple way and, and really quite uh, uh, easy to set up a uh, way to load levels in a level selection scene. I hope you learned something new today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.